Welcome back to uh, GSL Code A with Artosis and Wolf. Code A for Artosis. Yeah. And Wolf is... Uh, Code W. Code W. Well, here we are, Wolf. Oh, my God. I got to fix that. Oh, oh, oh you I hope fine. people are just tuning in right this second. You look great. Okay. Uh, here we are. It's Code A. And we have two groups that you and I are going to be doing together today. Yeah. Of course, you're having a lot of double days. Very tiring stuff. How was it yesterday? It was good. Uh, it went a bit longer, but, you know, that's all fine. It's yeah. uh, it's always good to see the longer the matches go, sometimes the better the, the content. Was that the case, though, last night? Last night, not really. We had uh, some pretty... Sometimes jobbers take a long time to kill each other. It's, I mean, I, there was definitely some low quality games in there, some weird throws. Uh, Youngwa like scraped by out of that group. Uh, spoiler alert: I actually wouldn't recommend going back and watching that group unless you like are somewhat masochistic or, or like <laughs> have like too much time on your I hands. I didn't see the nighttime group at all, so I was I was gonna go ahead and watch that this weekend. But you say this, maybe I'll skip it. Well, I mean, I think you would be somebody who might like find some strange pleasure in it. But uh, you know, I, I feel like sometimes when I watch you watch players make mistakes, there's like this this feeling of like ah, but you like <laughs> it. I think you like it. I I do like to watch people make mistakes. We're all human. There's well, you know there's like a genre of comedy called Schadenfreude for this even. Uh, so people do like to watch people make mistakes sometimes, or to to get embarrassed. Well, uh, we can look at the group C results from yesterday. Byung taking out uh, Impact and DRG over Tassadar. Byung taking out DRG. Yep. Impact beating Tassadar. No big surprises there. Tassadar getting last place. And uh, the fact that DRG and Byung come out, that's not a big surprise either. But Impact is a very good uh, very good player from Axiom. Yeah, he had a good run in the group as well. Uh, once knocked you out of a GSL qualifier. Yeah, the most recent one I played, in fact. He, uh, he crushed my dreams. Oh, that's really unfortunate. I can't believe he didn't win Code S that season. It really confused me. <laughs> um, <laughs> very strong player, though. And then, of course, uh, that second group, which I guess we didn't get to read, but that's okay. Yeah, Paralyzed and Yongwa got out. That's mm -hmm. the bottom line. Not too, too surprised about that. Oh, look at this. Journey's actually got... Uh, I was wondering about this because he was removed from the SKT roster officially yesterday, mm -hmm. and uh, that's for playoff rosters. doesn't necessarily mean he's not on the team, but now... With no team listed here, it looks like it's pretty official. Journey is now teamless. Uh, kind of a weird time to become teamless, considering he just qualified for Code A for the first time. Yeah, right? That is a little bit weird. But you know what? It could be personal reasons. He might have decided that uh, you know, that type of pro gamer lifestyle isn't for him anymore. That yeah. happens a lot. The turnover rate for pro gamers in South Korea is its high, man. Well, in a, a team environment like SK Telecom, you have to be just so, so ready to sit down and train in a very rigid uh, practice schedule. You, you know that show, uh, Deadliest Catch with the ca yeah. Crab Fisherman? Yeah. This is Deadliest Game. This and is so true. the fatality rate for Korean pro gamers is much higher than for Crab Fisherman. Yeah. Well, in a manner of speaking, they don't actually die. Well, their careers may, though. Their uh, careers do. That's the scary part, man. You know, I think this is the first time uh, Journey has played a televised match in Korea, like, you know, Highest tier like Pro League, uh, yeah. GSL, anything like that. I have not seen a game of his. I don't think, I mean, he may have played some online tournaments, but this is his first time in Code 8 for sure. Solar, on the other hand, a very accomplished Zerg player so mm -hmm. far. You gotta side with Solar for this one, but we'll see, man. Uh, Journey, maybe he can mess him up. Let's find out. <laughs> That was a pretty sick duo outro right there. Yeah. All right, in the top right, a very strong Zerg player. Solar. I really like this guy. Uh, he is, for his ZVP, it's one of my favorite ZVPs out there. And, uh, in fact, this group is just full of great ZVPers today with Beal on it as well. Definitely true. We have a proxy, by the way, for this guy at the bottom left. Journey. Uh, often what you might expect from a teamless player. No joke. This is uh, something we've already seen Innovation do on this very map. Yes, indeed. Uh, well, wow. this is uh, kind of a... You know what? Is this just like an eBay block or yeah, something? Yeah, I guess so. It's kind of funny because he has scouted this quickly. Uh, then he showed it. And the thing is, the drone was actually coming over anyways. Solar is not messing around here. Yeah, I mean, he's just going to make a barracks at home, so he's basically lost an SCV <laughs> of mining. He went up and he scouted the creep. He's like, okay, yeah, this is the position he's in. It's a two-player map. <laughs> oh, no. I have a bad feeling that Journey isn't going to make it out of this group today, Wolf. 
I have that. This is already a train wreck. This game. <laughs> oh my god. But usually, most players after doing something like this would actually just try to cut their losses by going CC first. But he's like just trying to do a normal Reaper build. So yeah, you know, I scouted. I found out where you started, so my Reaper can get there right away. You know, I'm not on a team, so I've never played this map. I'm like, I don't even. <laughs> I'm I not know. sure what to say here. It's pretty rough. Yeah, I mean, but he didn't. The way he sent his SCV around, he like sent it all the way to the natural. Did he? Okay, for a second, I thought he lost that SCV. Well, he he sent it up. It sat there, and then he went. It was really uh, kind of bizarre that he decided to go up there. Maybe it was for a hatch block. That's the only thing I can really think. But with the drone on his tail, obviously, you're not going to throw it out on eBay and get it up so low on health. Yeah, eBay blocks don't just even really work in this matchup anymore that Yeah, well. it's, I don't think it's even good, to The be maps honest. are, like, so much bigger, it takes too long to get there. Mm. If you, like, rush, rush it out, like, maybe you can Like, send it. your SCV before the depot? Yeah. Well, he did that. <laughs> um, well, here's the thing, though. Uh, he's obviously got some skill. He made it through the Code B qualifiers, and if you look at the company that came up out of the Code B qualifiers, like, you, if you had all the people that came through Code B in a Code S, you'd be like, Wow, pretty stacked. Yeah. Right? It's like the names are so big. They're such strong players. So uh, he's obviously a very good player. We just got to see if he can show us how he made it here. Yeah, this is uh, a big proving ground for him because who knows what happened in the qualifiers. There wasn't any coverage whatsoever. Yeah. Um, as everybody who normally does that was busy during this time, so nobody really knows, like, how well he played or if he cheesed or, yeah. you know, anything about how he got through because... Usually when you see the Code A qualifiers, every player has one build for every map and every matchup, but that's about it. But nobody can really watch you, so it's not like that matters. Oh, yeah. wow. Now, this was actually a little bit sloppy. I do believe he would have killed this had he just microed the Marine a little bit more himself instead of right-clicking as much. Yeah. Like, he, it felt like he just right-clicked on that Overlord. I was kind of like looking at you and talking with you and looking at the Reaper micro, so I didn't get to see 100%. But normally when there's like one hit point left and the Overlord was in your base that long, you are the one that screwed up. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think he was like, I guess, more focused on getting the Reaper saved. Yeah. I would say it's uh, more important actually to keep that one Reaper alive than yeah. to kill the Overlord, but it's pretty close. It is really close, actually, because the Reaper's definitely not doing any more damage, and he's already scouted a lot with it. So, uh, and killing the Overlord was really messed up uh, Solar's build. Yeah. Well, you know what? He's. It looks like he's going to go into Cloaked Banshee, perhaps, with Hellions. And it's a solid opener. Yeah. See what he can get done with it. But Solar is already playing a very safe game. You know, he's he's getting his quick speed. He did that drone scout, and he was sending it over to the side to look for proxy raxes. So all these things point towards him uh, being ready for anything that's going to come early on which means it'll bring it to the late game. So that's I feel like that's where Journey's going to have to do something. But you know what? Even if they're prepared for uh, a Banshee Hellion harassment, you can still definitely get some damage done. Yeah, that's that's true. And as long as you don't lose the Banshee, you know, later on it can be helpful. You know, sometimes just to, to fly in later on and snipe some drones or, you know, in, in some cases it can be useful just as part of your army composition, just some extra DPS if the queens aren't nearby. You can target Banelings down with it. It's a, it's a nice flying unit, uh, the best one in Terran's arsenal, of course, you can have this early. Uh, I mean, I guess you could call the medevac really useful, but it's only a healer, not a damage deal. That was a nice uh, medevac back. this early is not that good, though. Yeah, not so I have to agree with you. This early on, it's the Banshee. I mean, I have seen one base BC rushes, but those are out of style. Yeah, yeah. I was doing that a little bit in the beta because I was like, well, I don't know, they, they buffed the damage back up, but <laughs> it didn't really work. <laughs> no. Well, this is a, a push that should be pretty easily shut down with good Queen Micro and uh, Awareness, which he already has with three Overlords in position to spot which angle these units are coming in. The third Overlord, actually, though, on the left side is so close to the hatchery, it's not going to you know, give him that much advance warning, but he's already ready over here with those Queens. And he's even getting his Spore Crawlers up, so he's, he's pretty on top of what's going on here. You're not getting anything by Solar this game. And with three queens with that much energy and the creep connecting as we speak, as well as some speedlings out, I don't know that he's even going to do any damage. Yeah, well, let's find out. I mean, I think with all that transfuse energy, uh, it's it's going to be virtually impossible to um, to kill a queen. Yeah. But he's obviously you know going to get some AOE damage done on that drone over there. This one banshee out of sight of the spore crawler is starting to do some damage as well. I do like the fact that he's got a Viking, but uh, I also kind of would suspect if you're going to get Cloak that you commit to two Banshees before Viking. 
So that's, well, I found that just a little bit weird, but no big deal. I mean, he's going to be able to at least kill off a few overlords with that Viking. Yeah, and the Banshee just can't really do a whole lot by itself when there's, you know, spore crawlers at all. You mm. can't kill a queen, you can't one-shot a drone, you know, two Banshees can do that, but one, it's not really going to be worth it to try to find a sweet spot and pick off a drone here or there. It's just not enough hit points, not enough damage output. And he's going to go ahead and switch around here to start making medevacs. I like Solar's position a lot, though. Let's see how much damage can be done here, though, because oh. he's out of position. Yeah, he certainly is. So, uh, gets a few drones there and actually is starting to get out. Oh, I like the way that he's microing this as well. He's staying right towards the edge of the creep, and he's not over committing. He's not going over towards where the queens are coming. He's not going over where the lings can get him. Yeah. I just... really, the first pullback he did there was actually really, really good. Yeah, it was like he was like, all right, uh, I might be able to get a mass amount of damage done here, but I've already done a little bit more than I should have, and yeah. there's no reason for me to just get too excited and get too trigger happy yeah. here. It's very well done. And, uh, you know, even though he killed a decent amount of drones, still 75 drones for solar right now, so his economy getting pretty out of hand already. Yeah, that's exactly what he wants. Their base going up here for journey right now, above his main base, and he's, like, so focused on this overseer that the link's going to come in here and scout anyways, but... <laughs> He doesn't see that changing either, but the third base is so far not scouted. So that's one thing that Journey can do to get back into this. His 1-1 upgrades are also you know, finishing up here. Well, right oh, now no. these lings look like, ah, oh, they do get a surround. Oh, he's trying to get out of there, but actually gives them even more surface area to work with, unfortunately. And, uh, well, there goes his map presence. Everything was actually, you know, obviously that, that early SCV was a gigantic bungle, but... Uh, everything was looking good until those Hellions died, still. Yeah. Everything was looking pretty decent, but now he's got no way to deny creep spread. There's a fourth base going up for Solar right now. Attacking that is going to be pretty difficult. Uh, you know, in just about two minutes time, the creep should be connected all the way down to where you might potentially want to take a fifth base at yeah. 9 o'clock. And, and once all that's up, I mean, he's going to have to scan so much. Banely speed's going to be out. It's going to be hard for him to actually punish this. Oh, look at this. We have the blue flame upgrade on the way. Very interesting. He does already have that second factory. Uh, and he is already getting some widow mines out and whatnot. But uh, I'm a little bit surprised at the blue flame upgrade. He's I have not to say. making any Hellions, but he's got an armory on the way. Uh, you know, that, that's going to allow him to make bats. Excuse me. But uh, mostly probably just going to be for the 2 2 upgrades. I. I wonder if this is actually a mistake and he meant to research the burrow up fa speed upgrade with all the hell you know no, now is I'm adding hell bats with that factory or the armory excuse me okay uh, so I mean I guess he's gonna go for Batman here hell bats plus <laughs> marine rotter someone called that Batman once and I, I, I promised that. myself I would call that it that uh, that's, that's at a good least term sometimes for it. but uh, it's it's a cool unit composition and it's definitely something that we've seen somewhat recently as well like uh, for instance on heavy rain we saw a decent amount of that yeah uh, in the last you know several months but here we go we actually have Zerg coming down and trying to get something done oh that was a sick widow mine right there but Still not enough to keep his army alive. Not even close. And now he's got to boost those medevacs away. Everything died. And again, this is exactly what Solar wants. He wants to shut these down, keep his fourth base. You know, he, he was able to greedily take that because of uh, Journey's losses of the Hellions. And then you know, once his creep is out this far, it's hard to punish. And if he catches those units, then, I mean, it again becomes further more difficult for Journey to ever move out on the map. He's now desperately trying to keep his medevacs alive. I don't even think... Well, he does end up saving that one, but... Ooh, this one he flies over spores and it actually dies to them. So a little bit of a mistake there. And uh, not surprised, you know, obviously there's some nerves coming in. This but picks off three mutas, forces some moss mining time. That was actually an okay draw, yeah. <laughs> it I mean, turns if, out. If he gets the three mutas, it's absolutely worth it, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know... You know, there's there's definitely some mistakes that we're seeing from Journey here and there, and some sloppiness, and I think a lot of this can be attributed to nerves. He hasn't played on TV. He's playing against someone that's uh, actually very, very strong. But overall, I kind of like what I'm seeing. You know, for a new Terran that has never played on TV, playing against a beast like Solar, you can't complain too much about this play. Yeah, definitely solid. Um, you know, the the skeleton of what he's trying to do is, is definitely... It's, you could see it, you know, you could see the the marks of a good player in this. Somebody yeah. who definitely, you know, has the potential to qualify for Code A. He did. You know, I see why. Well, uh, right now we do have that 2-2 finishing up. It's going to finish up for Terran as well just after. So as long as the attack doesn't happen literally this second, uh, the upgrades will be even. 
And it's not, so that's good for him. But notice that extra banelings are being made uh, by Solar. Yeah, he sees the Hellbat comp, and yeah. he's like, banelings are just really good against Hellbats. What that's exactly you what you want to do. But he's actually, right now, Journey is mixing in a pretty good amount of Marauders. Not, well, actually he only has four. But he is making two at a time, so yeah, we'll see if they can help tank a bit. Yeah, like that. Honest, I think uh, <laughs> I'd like to see more because mm. I don't actually really like this Hellback composition. Every time I see it these days, like for the past month and a half, it seems like the Zerg just makes more Banelings and then the yeah. Hellbats can't really... Yeah, they do AoE damage, but they die before they can actually kill the Banelings. Well, that is a lot of Banelings, and I'm not sure that this is going to be able to stop that many Banelings right now. Rolling forward, they go through absolutely everything. This Thor trying to help out, but that is way too many Banelings. Yeah, way too many Banelings. A lot of Mutas to support as well. And yeah, he kills those few Banelings, but the army on the right side here is dead. And again, the army of Journey gets shut down pretty hard. And this gives Solar the position that he needs to take a fifth base over there. He's gotten mm. to the right of the map, and... How many more times is Journey really going to crash into this Zerg army that's crushing? Well, it feels almost hopeless already because, you know, the thing about TVZ is you battle over the Zerg's fourth. If you're battling over the fourth and he holds it, the Zerg is winning. Yeah. Uh, if you battle over it and you kill it, the Terran is winning. Now here, the fourth hasn't been attacked at all. His economy has been 100% okay the entire time at 83 drones. He's got good creep spread. He's pushing into a fifth. And the fourth base just now landing for Journey. So he's pretty well behind. Even though he's not dead yet, this is a very hard to recover from position. Now what he does have going for him is he has that fourth base now. We'll see how long he can actually keep it though with these Mulas coming over here. He's definitely going to lose some SCVs. Turret does finish in time here, but goes down immediately. And uh, he's also got plus three coming out. But here we go, a huge Baneling counterattack. And let's see how many SVs he can actually salvage. Oh, man. Well, a lot of these are probably going to die. At least he does lift that off and uh, saves it. Loses about 10 to, to 12 SVs there, I would say. Pretty rough. Losing little groups of Marines all over the place as well. And, you know, when you have 83 drones and five bases, you can afford to make a lot of Banelings and spend them on just about anything you want. Yeah, and he's not really losing that many Mutas, so he's got a lot of gas to spare. Also consider that he has 3-3 on the way now because his high, if he goes able to get that quickly too. Yeah. So it's not like it's going to be one of these games where the Zerg is playing a whole set of upgrades behind for a while. Plus there's no plus yeah. 3 armor for Journey, so that's, that's right. something to consider as well. But, you know, the plus 3 attack is the more important of the upgrades for sure. So having that is going to help a little bit. I guess that's where uh, he has a slight lead in this game, but this is a lot of creep to get through. Uh, he is finally on four bases. Who knows? Maybe if his macro kicks into overdrive here and has some perfect splitting coming up, he could do it. But this is a lot of banelings once again. So much Zerg here, and he targets down that Thor. Even with this big uh, overgrowth clump in the middle here, he's not able to escape. And if you look at the army's play at the top right, it's looking pretty bad for Journey. A lot of that in medevacs, which means he doesn't have the damage output to actually kill these, oh, man. these mutas. Just a bit off there. He actually ends up dealing with basically all the banelings and uh, Zerglings, but... The mute is still left. Now he does have a little attack coming up here to the side. Maybe he'll do something there, but he's lost his medevacs. So he's down to just one. As far as long-term units go, he has none right now. Yeah, he's going to lose these Marines finally here, or at least uh, forces to lift them from the main base. That command center died. And, I mean, he's down. That's it. GG. G. But you know what? Uh, this is definitely an up-and-coming Terran player that we're watching. There was some really good points to his play. You can't expect him on his first TV match, or what we are 99% sure is his yeah, first I'm TV like match. Yeah, like 99.9% sure. But yeah, you can't expect him to beat Solar right now. Like, this is that's a tall challenge for anyone, even some of the world's best pros. Yeah. Um, but still, I think that we saw some nice fundamentals there. We saw some good play. And the thing is... A lot of times you get super shaken up early on if you do something like send that SCV yeah, that does nothing. That's, like, that can get into your head, especially like your very first yeah, game ever. Like everyone's watching this and can, and I just left SKT1 for whatever reason, and now look at me. Wow. I have this SCV that was supposed to be for a proxy rack. I didn't proxy. I scouted his creep. I went home with it. Ah! That's basically what's going through his head, and he still played that game pretty well after that. Yeah, I think like... There's two ways to look at this if you're the player. It depends on your attitude. I think some players would say, well, if I played without doing that SV mistake, I could have definitely won that game, you know. And then another one is, oh, I can't believe I did that mistake and I'm getting stressed out, so. Yeah, well, uh, it seems like he's keeping his cool enough for the first game again. It's like, I can tell you, the nerves of playing in front of an audience, of playing a very important match, like your first real pro match and stuff like that, that's televised. There's a lot of pressure there. It takes a long time to get over that for a lot of people.
Yeah, well, he's chosen Way Station. I'm sure that he's hoping for close spawns here. That uh, would be much better for him for this matchup. And he's up against big uh, favorite here, Solar. All he needs is one more win to go to the winner's match. Let's find out if Journey can tie it up here on his map pick, Way Station.